Welcome back. American jazz, soul and gospel singer and pianist Aletta Adams was in Johannesburg to perform on Freedom Day. Adams spoke about what it meant for her to be in South Africa just after the passing of struggle icon Mama Winnie Madikizela Mandela. The preacher's daughter is enjoying her 45th year in the music industry and she's not showing any signs of letting up. Dudu Matibula sat down with her ahead of her Freedom Day performance. Oleta, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. I mean, since you started music, you know, you grew up in the church being the daughter of a preacher. You know, how has that influenced the way that you view life and your music career? Oh, wow. I learned a lot about love. I learned a, a lot about singing from the depths of your heart to try to reach another heart, another person to get them invested in the message of the song. And it played a very, very big role in my style of music. Um, there are songs that are meant to be just for fun, uh, but I love singing songs that really touch you, that stay with you for a lifetime, songs that have longevity, and also positive messages that inspire uh, or point out reality that help us to get from one hour to the next hour, from one day to the next day. So speaking about that, I mean, you started music back in the 1980s. You know, what was that like? I mean, I know one of the biggest genres at the time was disco music. How did you manage to stay the course in the choice that you had made with your selected genre? There had to be some compromises. Sometimes the only job you could get was playing for dance music in order to survive. But most of the time, with the skill that I had, uh, they really loved uh, to hear me sing the ballads. And that was important for me. And I was, I've been very blessed to play places. I played a lot of hotel clubs. So you cater to whomever is registered at the hotel. That could be anybody, plus the local people. And it taught me to be very versatile and to give every different kind of music my full attention and still give it all the feeling that I possibly can. If it's feelings or New York, New York or a Stevie Wonder medley or a Nat King Cole medley or Shaka Khan song, whatever it was, that I give it everything that I've got. Okay, speaking about those big names that you just mentioned to me, I mean, you've shared the stage with the likes of Luther Van Ross. I mean, what was that like? He was one of the most beautiful hosts ever. I took over from, I think it was In Vogue. Uh, I took the place of that group, and uh, Luther was so kind to me. I miss him. Uh, he was a one of a kind, and anybody who sounds like him is simply a copy, but yeah. he... Uh, he was the real thing. He was beautiful. He was extremely talented. I respected him because of his musicianship and, uh, you know, someone who could play, who could arrange, who could compose, who had this amazing voice. And I, I feel like the tour that we did together was far too short. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We dearly miss him as well. I mean, being that you're in South Africa at the moment, tell, tell me about your, your latest album that was released last year. The uh, new CD is called Third Set. Mm -hmm. I called it that because I used to, as I said, play in clubs where I would sing six nights a week, three one-hour shows mm -hmm. a night wow. for about 48 to 50 weeks a year. Wow. That's a lot of music. <laughs> yeah. And you have to, the hardest part of it is keeping everything sounding like it's fresh mm -hmm. and like this is the first time you're singing it. And, uh, you know, with such a, a variety of uh, people in the audience, you have to try to appeal to, mm -hmm. you don't even know who, what, what their likes are and dislikes. And, you know, so I gave that to the public for the first two shows. Mm -hmm. The third set, in order to keep the musicians happy, we would sing and play whatever we wanted, mm -hmm. in whatever style. So this was a time to really be creative and not uh, tied down to the requests of the public. Mm -hmm. And a lot of wonderful songs were uh, 
the, the arrangements were done in that third set. You know, we happened upon it and then said, oh, let's try that again. Uh, like New York State of Mind, yeah. I got that arrangement in one of those third sets. Mm -hmm. and, and Get Here, as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. uh, we started out in the first set and I, I put it to the last. We used to sing that song, play it for about 20 minutes. <laughs> Variations in the key of B flat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, know? yeah. So uh, there was a lot of growing there. We mm -hmm. had the opportunity to learn musically. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, talking about the fact that you're a pianist as well, you know, when I look at you and listen to your music, I can't help but think of Nina Simone. Oh, yes. You know, so the thing is, you know, looking at what um, Americans are having to deal with, especially the youth, you know, African Americans who are you know, dying at the hands of the police. Why do you think music like Nina Simone's music has helped in terms of inspiring other artists to speak up and use their art form as, as an activism? I feel a very great closeness to Nina. And in fact, I'm singing one of her songs, a blues Wonderful. song, on, Wonderful. on this uh, latest CD, Third Set, and it's called do I move you? Oh yes. And it's a real mm. crowd pleaser and my guitarist is amazing. The solos that he does, usually everybody starts <laughs> waving their hands, <laughs> screaming and hollering for James, James. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, but I've loved her music because of the depth. You know, I put her, the, it's the same category, my favorites, Nina Simone and Roberta Flack, mm -hmm. Donnie Hathaway. Mm -hmm. There's so much emotion and she sang for a cause. You could feel all of the hurting in mm -hmm. her and she made you aware of how it felt to live inside the body of an African American or in this case an African. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, it's different because we feel pain deeply because we live with it every single day. And we are only fighting for something that was meant to be ours from the very beginning. It's called equality and freedom. And, uh, and she was an activist and a very important one during uh, all of our civil rights uh, history. And uh, I think that's why she's so important to us still today. And she had a trouble, you know, there's a lot that you live with when you're not accepted on an equal basis for the talent that you have. She lacked nothing and she wanted to be a classical pianist and was not accepted. I know what that feels like to want to be one place, you know, and, it, and you have to sit and wait. Uh, but it taught us patience. And uh, so I think it all comes out all right if you're true to what you believe, if you're true to your destiny, your focus stays the same, the single focus. And that's, uh, that's why I love her. Mm.